from uh, a threat researcher's perspective, can you talk about some things that the cybersecurity industry isn't addressing or isn't taking seriously enough at the moment that makes you want to kind of shake everyone and say, why are you letting this slide? Well, I think I made reference to like romance games generally, right? Mm. Because I mean, mm-hmm. when you think threat research, it's almost always vendors. Yeah. So somebody's got to be paying the bill, yep. right? And that's just the nature of a free market economy. Fine, mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. But there's a whole lot of threat landscape where there just isn't anybody. So threat re- threat research in terms of, of like the work Citizen Lab does with uh, with NSO and others, the work some EFF does and uh, Ava Galperin with Stalkerware. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of threats out there that are effectively unaddressed, right? There, there's an ad hoc group that I can't point to an organization that deals with business email compromise, but romance scams are a part of that. Okay. Um, which is more money going out the door than there is for ransomware. Yeah. So, I mean, by dollars, it's more impactful. But, I mean, if I steal from a company, they probably have insurance. I'm not going to say it's fun. I'm not going to say you don't have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. But insured threat, I mean, the whole point of insure, insurance is to deal with a threat when you deal with taking somebody's life savings. And I've just had a handful of pro bono clients as I can't do anything for them. Right. You know, I got to talk about this is what happened and whatever. But, you know, there was some elderly lady who, um, you know, her lawyer got business email compromised, sent a down payment for a house that got redirected. And sorry, you're at your life savings. That was your retirement. And I mean, I could tell her how she got screwed. But I can't do anything about it because, well, there's nobody paying that bill. Yeah, um, and I don't know how to solve that problem except contributing some measure of my time for pro bono work. Okay, uh, and encouraging others to do so because I don't know, pick anything that you're interested in any group. Yeah, right? if you yeah, got school little... kids. Speak to a PTA about how to monitor your kid's cell phone and how to deal with uh, sexting in schools and bullying. Mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. there's especially after the pandemic, so much of our life has li- lived online to yes. where there's no protection. Yeah. Like I'm not a big like cheerleader for Facebook, but in the last year or so they're putting together, they put together a team to say, you know, what, we're going to protect our users while they're on our platform instead mm-hmm. of just protecting our platform. Right. You know, realizing that this is a captive portal. So there's some measure of responsibility we have good, good on them. I think they should yeah. do more, but there's lots well, of like people the out there that are just like, whatever you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're not, you're not the customer, you're the product being sold. Mm-hmm. So, you know, can you, can you talk about some of like, uh, you know, I, like you said, it, you can volunteer anywhere, but do you have any particular organizations or starting places for people who want to sort of uh, contribute their, their effort to sort of pushing back the uh, the tide? Uh, well, I mean, it's, I mean, like I said, there's some groups I mentioned. I don't know Citizen Lab takes volunteers. I know EFF mm-hmm. does have a network of a network right. of people that'll connect you to things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even in forensics, right? As I picked up a couple of pro bono forensics cases through the EFF that okay. I've helped out with. Um, you know, beyond that, it's it's almost local groups. Yeah. You know, and it, and it's really it's like you don't have to go out somewhere else to go find something. Right. It's just look around in your own circle and you're going to find things. Yes. Right. You know, if, if, if you have kids and you're involved with the PTA, there's mm-hmm. something you do about cyberbullying, stalking, all the threats to, to children. You know, yep. if you like elderly, there's, you know, go to a nursing home or, uh, you know, an elderly support group or an elder, uh, elder abuse hotline. Mm-hmm. If cyber stalking is your concern, there's crisis pregnancy centers and, and crisis residential centers for uh, uh, women in transition or, or, or even or even men who face similar threats. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's, you know, if there's a social cause that that you care about or a social group you're part of, odds are there's a cybersecurity concern, right? Yeah. Um, that that you can go to, right? Is generally I don't pro bono my time to companies who can pay me, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. you know, because, well, you've got money and, you know, you need to go figure out your books so that you pay appropriately. But, you know, you've got lots of civic groups. I mean, you, there's rotary societies, right? anything that, that, you know, uh, you're building your social security or social network in the community you're in. Mm-hmm. Opportunities will find you, right? Yeah. If, if yeah. you're getting, well, I'd say if you're getting out of the house, depending on where you are and where we are in the pandemic, that might be hard. But, um, you know, almost everybody has has some yeah. network, you know, yeah. close to them or their interest level where they they can be involved. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. 
Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.